Thanksgiving service. It's marvellous, isn't it? All this stuff here that we've, uh, we've given. <clears throat> that's going to all going to be given to the food banks. And uh, we're going to have a great time this morning. It's all about seeds and plants and gardens in the Bible. So the first bit is about seeds and plants and then gardens in the Bible. So let's just have an opening prayer praising God for his wonderful harvest. Dear God, we thank you for this food and all these provisions that you have given us. Lord, we do pray and we know that there is going to be shortages or there may be shortages in supermarkets and such like. We pray that that will be overcome as well. Pray for the abundance of your harvest. We thank you that the harvest is brought in once again. And Lord, as we see the rainbow in the sky, we remember your promise that sea time and harvest will come until you come again. And we thank you again for the abundance of your harvest. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> it's wonderful, isn't it, to come here and to worship together. So we're going to have a really good hymn that we can... Uh, really use our lungs with we can sing now and we've done that for a couple of weeks so we're going to have great is your faithfulness O god my father Yeah. 
<coughs> yeah, please come and. It's wonderful. It's uh, it's good. Great variety of things on the cable, isn't there? And uh, in the supermarkets, normally there's a great variety of things in the supermarkets. Some of the supermarkets at the moment are a little bit bare, aren't they? But um, there's also lots of controversy, isn't it? That's lovely about things and how they're grown, isn't it? There is um, a bewildering amount of stuff and there was also a demand for lots of stuff and they've got to be grown out of season. I think, put your hand up if you remember you only had seasonal vegetables when it was a season at one time. But now you can have seasonable vegetables when it's not seasonable. That's because of various programmes and there's always this outcry about GM food foods, isn't it? Genetic modification of foods and the rights and wrongs of that. But I'm going to say something controversial here. Oh yes, very controversial. Every Christian will say that all foods are GM. They're God made. <laughs> <coughs> and that's why we're giving thanks today, isn't it? God made the food and we're pra praising God for the food. So I think we would be really good at this point to sing our harvest song that we sung at Messy Church. It's really lively, isn't it? And we joined in and the kids were joining in, I'm sure. So we're going to sing our harvest song. Yes. Oh, maracas under the chairs. Brilliant. I said this is going to be lively this morning.
that's just another way of praying, because we're thanking God, isn't it? But we're praying in song. Well, we've got a little bit... I hope you're not all settling down thinking you're going to sleep, because we've got lots of things to do today. Whoa! First of all, we have a world. And this is going to help us with a little quiz we're going to do now. It's to show the world of amazing harvest. The first thing is... And I've got some things in my bag... The first one's very easy, and I'll be very disappointed if one person here doesn't get it anyway. And what we're going to do is we're going to show a fruit, and then I'm going to throw the ball into the, into the congregation, and whoever catches it will have to tell you, tell me where this fruit comes from in the world, or the, the most prevalent place this fruit comes from. Well, okay, I'm going to throw the ball first. That's cheating, really, isn't it? Okay, ready? Oh. oh, okay. okay. What is this? So, can you find that on the on the? Where does the kiwi fruit come from? Obviously. Oh, well, actually, I've got here New Zealand. New Zealand branded kiwi fruit. Oh, here we go. Well done. So you can keep that for a minute, and we can throw it to somebody else in a minute. So the next thing. I've got. We're getting a bit more difficult as we go along. Okay, what we got next? Anyone? Any idea where that? What that is? Oh! <laughs> any idea who? What? Oh! Oh! What's that then, Rich? It's a pomegranate. That's right. Where do you reckon? It, it's, there's loads of places, but well, I suppose they do have it in Belgium, but it's mainly in the Middle East and the USA and California and Arizona in dry areas, basically. It needs to be in a dry area. So that's a pomegranate. And who's had a pomegranate here? It's a choir taste, isn't it? It's all seeds. It's 160. Oh, did you? Yeah, Middle East <coughs> and. Uh, 166 seeds in most pomegranates. There we are, a little useless information. Okay, so what's that? A mango. <coughs> okay, anyone want to guess where the mango is? Throw the ball, throw the globe in. Ah. Oh. <coughs> okay, here's a quiz question for you. It's the national fruit of three countries. Can you guess what those are? Oh, that's interesting. I bet you won't. Honduras. Sorry? Honduras. No. Jamaica. No. Spain. No. Malaysia. Okay, it's in Asia. They're all in Asia. It's the national fruit. I'll tell you, with Pakistan, India, and the Philippines, and it's the national tree of Bangladesh. It's, re it's really grown in tropical climates, but they're very prevalent in these countries. So, any idea where Pakistan is? I'm very bad at geography. Oh, well done. <laughs> and next door to it, of course, is India and Bangladesh around the corner. And Philippines, well, how many islands in the Philippines? I don't know the answer to this, but there's thousands, isn't there? The Philippines has got lots of islands. So that's that one. Now, this is the difficult one. I think it's difficult. And I want, there's a common name, and there's the name that's actually called. So here we are. I might have to come down to you for this one. <coughs> what are these? Any idea? That's the common name. What's the real name? Yeah. Yes. Oh, well, well done. Well done. Yeah. Say it again. Yeah. Oh, are they? Yeah. 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 Anyone else want to have a look at them? They are Cape Gooseberry. Or a, what, how do you pronounce that again? Pasalis. So they, okay, now the question is, and apparently, you can eat them as they are, you can put them in salads, but a really wonderful way you can do eat them is to cover them in chocolate, apparently. And they're very delicious. I've never tasted one, so maybe I'll try one later. 
But so any ideas where they're grown? Down the, our lane. Down our lane. Yes, there are some down our lane. Yeah. Mm, yes, the South Africans are their Cape, but they're not. They're not indigenous to that. They were brought there. Do you know where they came from? Where's well, the Andes? Apparently, the Andes uh, in Peru and Chile. So Peru and Chile is the prevalent, prevalent place where they're grown. Up high in the mountains. So we've got some down in the plains. Yeah. So we've got some, I didn't realise, but we've got some growing down our lane where we live. Which is incredible, isn't it? So obviously, it's not that mountainous, is it? But... Uh, <laughs> so these are the... These are the world of amazing harvest, different things. I could have done many more things, of course. And these come from like pineapples and things like that. Pineapples, I didn't realise. I thought pineapples grew on trees. No, they don't. No, they do not. They grow out the ground. And they've got very prickly, very sharp um, defences. And you can cut your hand on them, apparently, if you're not used to it. We went to the, to the Caribbean and uh, they showed us a pineapple grove there. And it's a very skilled job to cut the pineapples down. But I thought it was a pineapple tree. There's that song, isn't it, the pineapple tree? That's rubbish. It grows out the ground. It's a bit like bananas, if we're on facts. What is a banana, do you know? It's a herb. Indeed. It's a herb. It's the biggest herb in the world. And it dies every year and regrows up further. And so that's amazing. So we have a banana tree, but actually it's a herb. The world is wonderful, isn't it? And it's so wonderful that I want to volunteer to, for someone to pray for this wonderful world of harvest. Oh, come on, someone's going to volunteer, yeah? Anne's going to volunteer, I know she would. Heavenly <laughs> <laughs> Father, thank you for, for the harvest, Lord. Thank you for, for the variety that we have. Mm -hmm. um, and the various things that we can do with what you have is, is endlessly um, what we can do with all the food that you provide. Thank, thank you for the, the different textures, the different colours, the different yeah. flavours, all the different ways that we can do it. Thank you for that for our being, for your love for us, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. But there's another world of, of harvest. And that's that world of terrible hurts and hunger harvest. And that's something sad, isn't it? We're rejoicing in that. But there is also places in the world, I don't know if anyone's got the, the, the world globe there, but there are places in the world where there's wars, where there's troubles, where there's famine and distress. And that's a harvest that man has given. God has given this wonderful ha this harvest, but man has given this terrible harvest of destruction. And we, it's a lot in the news, isn't it, about um, environmental things. And we've destroyed this world, and we're continuing to destroy this world. And if we don't be, behave ourselves and get ourselves together, we're going to destroy it completely. But it's this world of terrible hurt and hunger that we've created, isn't it? And uh, I just want to pray for those areas now where there's hurt, there's hunger, there's persecution. In fact, I don't. I think I want somebody else to. So Janice is going to pray for those areas. Thank you, Janice. I know, sorry. Me? Yeah. Uh, I've not got no, okay, Jan's going to pray for me. Sorry, Janice. I forgot your voice. Lord, we do come to you this morning. Lord, we ask forgiveness that we have turned your wonderful world into a place where there is hunger, Lord, is environmental damage, Lord, and Lord, this, this world is, is hurting in so many ways, Lord, and we pray for all those in, in governments around the world who are trying to sort these things out, Lord, we pray that we won't be greedy in, in the West and want everything, Lord, and that we will share with, with those who don't have and 
Amen. Amen. The third thing is, we're going to leave it there, is a world of hope. Because there's a lot of good things going on. Who listened to the, the uh, music last night? It was good, wasn't it, on television? And it was an environmental thing, and it's all over the world, and people uh, are agreeing to give billions of pounds to help the environment, to help those in other lands where vaccinations aren't going ahead. And it's, uh, you know, in this country we've got 90% nearly of people who are vaccinating, which is brilliant. In some lands in Africa, it's only 2 or 3%. Which is shocking, and it's going to all affect us if we, if this doesn't happen. So the good things of this world is that vaccinations have come, haven't they? There's lots of aid workers working, and even some of them losing their lives. So we can thank God for all that good work in the world. We can thank God that the vaccinations came so quick. It's amazing. It's a miracle, really. And you know, in this work, in this country. Even the most um, basic estimations are that 100,000 people more would have died if the vaccinations hadn't come. And so that's something to praise God for, isn't it? And uh, we, thank them for, we thank God for vaccinations, for the aid countries in need, and it's continuing. We've got a, a quiz coming up in November, haven't we, Dave, um, with, uh, for Tear Fund, which you all very... Um, welcome to come to either online I think or here maybe we don't know yet but anyway it's Tear Fund do a great work if you don't know them they're a Christian organization that do a great work all around the world mainly a lot of it is digging wells and supplying water for those that can't get it and it's an incredibly good work and they have a quiz here once a year it's called the great quiz I think what was it 20,000 plus people throughout this country are doing this quiz and it's a good interactive quiz everyone likes a quiz don't they most people, anyway. Yeah, we did. We did it on Zoom. And they raised lots of money for this. And Tear Fund and loads of other these organisations are doing this great work. So we can thank God for that. So I'm, you know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to choose somebody. Peter, would you thank God for all the people and all the vaccinations and everything else that you can think of the good in this world, for hope, the world of hope? Thank you, Peter. And at that point, I think it's a good place to to do a third hymn, which is Thank You, Lord, for this fine day. It's a lovely little hymn of praise for what God has done for us.
Well, we're going to have a, a very short reading. In, in Messy Church, we're doing parables, aren't we, which are stories that Jesus told with a meaning. We've got a little parable here that Jesus told. It's found in Luke 13, verses 6 to 9. And he said this. Then he told this parable. Jesus told this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I have been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it be used up, use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig round it and fertilise it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. So Jesus' story's always had a meaning. So what's the meaning of this one? I feel this is quite a clear meaning here. And it's talking about God planting a vineyard or planting fruit, and that's in everyone. So God is the farmer and he's planting. But when he looks at what he's planted, he's disappointed because we haven't produced the fruit that we wanted. We haven't done the things that we should have done. Yet this gardener is God of love. In, in 1 John it says about God is love. It's just that. And God is love. So he gives us another chance. He gives us lots of chances. Before the ground force come in and call to dig over our land, God wants a bit longer for the fruit to come. So I'm going to look at three gardens that are in the Bible. And it will tell us why God does this. Why is he waiting for us to turn to Jesus, his son. So the three special gardens will give us a clue to what this is about. Now the first garden is an apple garden. Now, I've got some apples here. And this apple garden is like the back beginning of the Bible. Now I know it might not be an apple, before anyone says, but it might well have been an apple. In defence. Now I've got some apples here. I've got a selection of apples, and uh, that one's a bit weird. That, but I'll explain that. So no need to eat that, Holly. But uh, did you, anyone tell me what those apples are? I'll just let you look at them, and if anyone can say what make they are, apart from that one, obviously. Oh yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, they, they're not cooking at it, no. The others are, but okay. But there's lots of variety of apples. I don't know if you want to have a look. I'm sure there's lots of gardeners here who can tell me what that, that one is a bit different. I'll explain about that one. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I've missed out. Granny Smith, well done. Any idea on the other one? I've had cooking apples, which is uh, Bramley. That's going to get one, actually. It's a great, it's a, it's a gala apple. It could be a great one. <laughs> and there we are, great to see them. And that strange one on top is because, and now there's a story behind this, I tried to find an apple that was slightly different. Everyone's got their choices. And not all, all apples are good to eat, like they are. If I was to chew into that, what do you reckon? Do you think I'd like it? It would be very sour, wouldn't it? And that's what happens. This one is my representation of a... <laughs> it's, I couldn't find a russet apple anywhere. Does anyone know how to buy it? A russet apple is very... Ooh, it's, like, it's like having sandpaper. And it's very bruised apple. And it's... Uh, it used to, when I was growing up, we used to have russet, russet apples, but I could not find for love or money anywhere that sells russet apples, probably because they don't taste particularly nice, in my opinion. But they're all different, and everyone's got different choices. Well, this garden, of course, is the Garden of Eden. Everyone's got a favourite apple, and there's lots of wonderful-looking fruit around, isn't there? Now, God made the Garden of Eden perfect. It says, when God made the world, he made man to live in there, man and woman to live in there, and the world was perfect. He said, it is good. But he gave them a choice. He gave them a choice to obey him or to disobey him. 
He only gave them one particular reason. He said, all the garden is yours, you can eat anything apart from that tree over there. That was the test for them. But they couldn't resist it. And with the devil's help, of saying, did God really say that in the form of a serpent? You can imagine it. Did God really say that? You know, and Eve stretched forward, took the fruit and gave it to Adam. And then they had to be thrown out of the garden because they had broken that fellowship. So that garden is the sadness of sin coming into the world, that disobedience. I always look at this as uh, looking there's God and there's man. And at once in the garden they were there together. It says wonderful words in, in the beginning of the Bible. It says they walked together at the end of the day. Jesus and Adam and Eve walked together in the garden in the cool of the day. They had that great relationship. But because of sin, and God cannot look on sin, they had this barrier between them. But we're going to look at how we overcome that later. So that's the first garden. It's the apple garden. Now the second garden is a different garden altogether. Now, all right, I'm going to see if anyone would take these. They may not or may not. Anyone, any idea what this is? It's the Garden of Gethsemane, yes. But it's olives, isn't it? I can't undo it, so maybe we can't undo it. Oh, maybe, yeah, this could be messy. I've got some picks. Who likes olives here? Oh, some do. That's good. So they got a distinctive taste. I'm not that keen on olives, I must admit. But uh, if anyone wants an olive, we'll pass it round. Yeah. Quite slimy. Oh, good. There we are. You can have some picks, and I'll just take a couple from me for my own. Okay, just pass them round while I talk about the olive garden. Garden of Gethsemane was an olive garden. It produced olives like these. These grow in gardens too and can be eaten, but they also can be crushed. I'm going to try something now that I might regret. I'm going to crush them. And it's not going to really work. But anyway, <laughs> it's worth a try. There is some juice come out of it. You've got to really crush them. But what happens is it becomes and can be made into this, olive oil. And olive oil can be put on your salad. You can put down lots of it. You can, you can fry vegetables and others with it. It's very nice stuff, olive oil. But the olive garden that we're thinking about is the Garden of Eden. Oh, sorry, the Garden of Gethsemane. And in that garden, there was Jesus who was crushed for us. He had to come to that garden and he had to submit to his father's will and uh, he had to be crushed before the world. And that's a real illustration of the olives being crushed, isn't it? The olive gun. He was crushed for us. He died for us. There's the cross. Now I said earlier that man and God were like that. Man and God were like that because of the sin in the Garden of, of Eden. But if you do that, I'll try and do that, we'll bridge the gap with the cross in the middle because Jesus suffered on the cross so that we can have that new relationship with Jesus and through Jesus with God. So that's really the culmination of what God did through Jesus on the cross for us. And that's a wonderful thing to celebrate, isn't it? So when we look at olives and we taste the olives and we think about that, we think of Jesus being crushed on the, on the cross. And that, what he was willing to do, is so can we have a relationship with God through that. But the third God, garden is very different again. In fact, it's not really a garden, it's, it's a vineyard. A vineyard. Now, who likes grapes? We're going to hang them around again. There we go. There's grapes of all sizes. Now, grapes, and who likes grapes? I bet there'd be more people than liked olives. Yes. They can be very sweet. Yeah, okay, thank you. And uh, tasty, which is why sometimes, I don't hear it so much, that grapes were brought to people in hospital. I don't know if you know they're allowed to do it even now, but... Grapes help us to get better or feel better. 
I remember when I was um, ill, which was very little, when I was small, I wasn't ill very often, but when I was, I used to look forward to two things. Grapes and chicken soup. Everyone has chicken soup when they're ill, don't they? Or tomato soup. But that was what we had. It made us feel better. It's, it is sweet and they're wonderful. So these are the free gardens and they're free fruits. Now these three gardens all have one rather special garden to look after them. All these three gardens, oh. <laughs> all these three gardens have one faithful gardener. As I said, the apple garden is at the beginning of the Bible story in Eden, then the garden of Gethsemane, and then the, where Jesus was crushed for us, and he took on all our sins on him. And then the third thing, the last garden, was the grape garden. And in this garden, Jesus says he is the main trunk of the tree. We're going to look at that next time, so it's not a bit of a spoiler at Messy Church. But we're going to look about the vine and the branches. And Jesus used this as another parable. And if you want to read it, it's in John 15. He said, I am the vine, you are the branches. And you're all feeding off me. And if you're not on the vine, if you snap off a, a branch of the vine, what happens to the grapes? They die, they don't grow. And that's what it is. It's about growing together with grapes, showing us how we grow and we're linked to Jesus. Jesus is the trunk, the vine, and we are the branches that come off of it. This is the vineyard of this, of this picture here. And it produces a harvest of good things for us and the world around us. The sort of place God intended us to do all along. We're going back to how the Garden of Eden was. But it's not perfect yet. And it will be perfect in the end. But now we have this wonderful expression of how God is going to give us these things. Now, Dave, can you put up something that uh, God has given us? So when Jesus went into heaven, he said to me, I'm not going to leave you alone. His disciples were sad. Of course they were sad. He'd come back from from the death from the dead he'd raised again and he went up into heaven but he said don't be sad because i'm going to give you the holy spirit to live in you and be in your lives and i'm going to give you these through the holy spirit now this is quite a list isn't it and these are the things that we can have if we have that relationship with jesus if we trust in him as our savior if we put our trust and we have that that um, chasm filled by the cross we can have love for one another. We can have joy. We have plenty of joy this morning, haven't we? Yeah. And we can have peace. That's very important in this day and age, isn't it? Peace. I wish I could have peace, people say. You can have peace in Jesus. We can be patient. I think I'm, it's still working on me on that one. But patience is another thing of the fruit of the Spirit. Like those uh, grapes. It's this, this sweetness. We can be kind to each other. Kindness. We can have that goodness that is for each other. We can have that gentleness with each other. And that's very important in this world where there's a lot of bruised and, and damaged people. But we're gentle with them. We can have that self-control. Again, another thing that maybe I'm lacking. We need to have self-control in our lives. And above all else, we can have faithfulness. And our faithfulness to one another and to God. Now, I know what you're thinking, some of you probably. You can have that outside of Jesus, and that's true. But you can have it fully in Jesus. There is a thing in the Bible called common grace, and I believe that's for everyone. It's given to lots of people. But the special grace of God, that grace means God's riches at Christ's expense. If that's a good way of remembering what grace means. And if you have that grace in your life, you have that fruit of the Spirit, fruit of the Spirit you can feel these more, more personal in your life. And that's what Jesus has given us. And that's why we thank him for the harvest. This harvest for the harvest of souls. That he is willing to die for us on the cross. So that we can go and have that relationship with, us, with him. I've finished speaking now. I'm just going to have a word of prayer. And we will finish. But remember that. That is what God has done for us. We spoilt this world. We're still spoiling this world. But God has given us another chance through Jesus Christ. So please take it. <coughs> Excuse me. Please take this chance for that relationship to be 
restored through the cross. So let's pray. <coughs> Father God, thank you for these three gardens which show us you have been faithful <coughs> and long to be faithful to each one of us. As we face up to our wrong choices and as we accept that Jesus was crushed in our place, help us to be linked to you so that our lives would produce a bumper harvest. Amen. <coughs> Sorry. Cough. Honestly, it's not COVID. <coughs> I've had this cough for 10 years. <coughs> Can't get rid of it. Okay. Maybe you could pray for me to get rid of it. That'd be good. But uh, the last hymn we're going to sing is 732, which is an old favourite. We plough the fields and scatter. We know this one, don't we? benediction which is a verse from scripture and I found one in Isaiah 58 verse 11 which I think fits beautifully with our theme of harvest and it goes like this the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire with good things and make your bones strong you shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water where waters will never run dry amen, amen. now before we all go we've got so many things to look forward to. There's a few notices here. So you can sit down, please. Please do sit down. Don't stand on my behalf. Okay. First of all, we're going to have a... Uh, and that's wonderful, isn't it? I was saying to Janet, Janet was saying, it's wonderful to have everyone eating together. So afterwards, we've got some food, and uh, it's a buffet, and everyone here is welcome. And we're going to have food together. We're going to have a time of fellowship together. That's good. So that's our harvest lunch, I would call it, 
but that'd be wonderful. So in the other room, we're going to go and we're going to eat and have fellowship together, which is great. Next week, something to pray for. On Wednesday, we've got our elders meeting at half seven. So Roger, myself and David, we're going to discuss the church and how we open the church and how things are. So that's one thing. The second thing is uh, the Sussex Gospel Partnership Annual Conference is coming up on Saturday the 13th of November. It's for um, everyday faith and everyday faithfulness. So it's uh, Saturday the 13th of November, 10 a.m. to 3.30 at the King's Centre in Burgess Hill. So if you want to go to that or interested in that, the main speaker is Mark Green, who's the mission champion for London Institute for Contemporary Christianity. That's good because it, contemporary Christianity means Christianity for now. It's not old fashioned. That's looking forward. So that's good. And that, if you're interested in that, please come and see me or, or Roger or Dave and we can, can uh, point you towards that. And also, it's wonderful as we open up. We're now having coffee and tea after, after the service. Yay! But we've got to have a rotor for that. So the old the old dreaded rotor, but Brenda's kindly put a list at the back of the church in, on the notice board outside, and uh, if you would like to do, to offer your services to bring the, just the milk and biscuits each week, please put your name down there, but from next week we're going to have coffee and tea and biscuits, Richard, after the service. <laughs> so we're back to that, so that's, praise God. Peter, yes. Jesus died on the cross, didn't he? He did, that's brilliant, well done. Yeah. He did. I've got so, one more oh, one more notice, Dave, please. Stand up here so the microphone can hear me. Um, on Saturday, October the oh, 16th, yeah. we are having a afternoon tea. If you remember the ladies' afternoon teas we used to have, it's like that, but anybody can come, so uh, men and ladies. And my own Janet is going to be talking about I don't know what. So. Saturday 16th of October from 3 to 5 p.m. We're going to have an afternoon tea here, so put that in your diaries. Excellent. Sorry, I forgot that one, didn't I? Shocking. But there we go. So let's just finish with a word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you we had fun together, but also I thank you that we learned the lesson, as Richard said, that Jesus died on the cross for us. May if we take nothing else away from this meeting this morning, I pray that we'll have that in our hearts and make it real for us in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.